Hello again and welcome back to Pickboard Gamer. My name is Ectorakos and today I will explain the game Ecosphera Rewilding the World. The game is designed by Albert Pinilla and Julia Johansson, a great designer couple from Finland, also known for their game We Can Play. Ecosphera is a cooperative deck building game in which players are trying to restore nature. The game can be played with up to four players, also has a solo mode and takes about an hour to finish. The game will be on Kickstarter very soon and please note that the game I show in the video is a prototype and the components are not final. Also some of the rules that I will explain are subject to change. Let's start with a quick overview and then I will explain the rules. In the game players will take turns using a row of cards revealed from their personal decks. Players will be combining element cards in order to acquire plant and fungi cards. When these plant and fungi cards start to be revealed in their row of cards, players will be able to combine them and acquire animal cards. Then, when these animal cards are combined, we'll award the players with biometiles. If a player is unable to progress by these means during a turn, their deck will incorporate useless disaster cards. And whenever three or more disaster cards are drawn during a player's turn, players unfortunately gain an extinction tile. All players lose the game if they gain all seven extinction tiles. But if they manage to collect all seven biome tiles first, they will collectively win in Ecosphera. At first, separate the element cards according to their type and place these stacks one next to the other in the middle of the table. Each stack should contain a number of cards that depend on the difficulty level that you will choose to use. If you want to play the game in the easiest mode, you will use 8 cards in each of the stacks. If you want to make the game harder, you will use less cards in each of the stacks to a minimum of 3, which is the hardest level. Then, in each of the stacks you will also add one card per player in the game. In this example, I'll be setting up for the easiest mode with a two-player count. So each of the element stacks should contain 10 cards. Remaining element cards are not used and returned to the box. Above the row of element cards, you will create a row of Plant and Fungi Kingdom cards. After you shuffle these cards, create a face-down stack right here and then flip the top four cards, placing them facing upwards. Then, you will do the same with the Animal Kingdom cards. Shuffle the deck, create a face-down stack above the plant cards and flip the top four cards, placing them facing upwards. Then you also create a stack with disaster cards facing upwards, a stack with the seven extinction tiles and a stack with the seven biome tiles. You do not need to shuffle these components. Next, each player takes two disaster cards and one element of each type from the supply. Players shuffle all of these cards together and create a face-down stack to the left of their play area. Then, players flip the top four cards and create a line of cards next to their draw stack. Players also have a virtual space where they will be placing their discards facing downwards. Finally, each player takes a set of three different ability tiles and any remaining such tiles are removed from the game. The game is now ready to start. In the game, players alternate turns starting with a random player and continuing in a clockwise order and this is done indefinitely until either all players win by gaining the 7th biome tile or they collectively lose by gaining the 7th extinction tile. On their turn, players use a line of cards drawn from their personal deck in order to acquire new cards that will be added into that deck. To reach the goal of collecting biome tiles, players first need to acquire plant fungi cards and then they will use these plant cards in order to acquire animal cards and these animal cards will lead them to gain biome tiles. So let's start with the first part of this process and understand how we can gain plant cards. In the bottom part of plant cards we see the elements required in order to acquire these plant cards. As you can see, my current line of cards has all the elements required to acquire the Boletus Edulis card. If you have all elements required by a plant card, you exhaust them by shifting them a bit upwards as I show you here. 
Then you gain the plant card and you instantly replenish the empty space with a new card from the corresponding stack. The acquired card is immediately placed in the current line of cards as not exhausted and can be used even in the same turn. However, you can still gain a plant card if you're only missing one of the required elements. So with my quite good line of cards, I could gain any plant card currently available in the middle of the table. When you're missing one element, after exhausting the element cards that you have, you gain the plant card but also the element card that you're missing from the corresponding element supply. Of course, if the element you're lacking is not available in the supply, you would not be able to gain the plant card at all. Now both of the new cards enter the line of cards with the element card as exhausted because you need it for the plant card and the plant card as not exhausted and ready to be used if possible. After you gain a plant card, symbols depicted in the bottom of the card are irrelevant. What now is relevant are symbols depicted in the top part of the card. These will help us gain animal cards. Also, some cards depict one or more of the ability symbols. We will talk about abilities in a little bit. When a player can do nothing more with their line of cards, that player's turn is over. The player takes all of the cards in the line and places them in their personal discard pile in the right side of their play area. Players finish their turn by flipping four new cards from their deck, forming a new line of cards. When a player is unable to draw all four cards, they shuffle their discards, form a new draw deck and continue drawing. And just like that, cards that we acquire from the middle of the table will show up again in the future. Now let's see how we acquire animal cards using plant cards. To gain an animal card, you need to exhaust two plant cards that share at least one common bioma symbol. Some pair of cards could share more than one common bioma symbol. Now if there are animal cards in the middle of the table which depict that common bioma type, then you exhaust the plant cards and gain one of these animals. You replenish the empty space and you place the new animal in your row of cards as unexhausted and ready to use. Let's see now how we can get biometiles. To gain biometiles, you need two animal cards that share at least two common biometypes in their bottom part. Again, it's natural that some pairs, like in this case, share more than one common biometype. Then you exhaust the animal cards and all players acquire all of the common biometype tiles not only one, like in the case of gaining animals. So if I exhausted these two cards, I would gain the Tundra, the Taiga, and the Temperate Forests. If you have just gained the seventh Bioma tile, then all players immediately win the game. Now there's a little twist in the game regarding plant cards that depict a little mushroom symbol in the top left corner. All of these cards interact with the one and only mushroom card, Boletus edulis. If you have both such cards in your card line, you can exhaust them and you go straight from plants to bioma tiles and you take the tile that corresponds to the bioma symbol these cards share. In this case, the temperate forest. Of course, alternatively, you can gain an animal card as normal. Now let's see how things can turn ugly for players. If during a player's turn that player is unable to gain any card or gain any bioma tile, then that player takes a disaster card from the supply, placing it into their card line, and that player's turn is immediately over. In this example, we had a disaster card which is useless, plant and animal cards cannot work without a pair, and currently I could gain no plant card from the middle of the table using just a water element. So in this example, I would have to take a disaster card and end my turn. The next rule is that during your turn, if your card line contains three same element cards, then again you take one disaster card from the supply and your turn is over. Rule number three, if during your turn your card line contains three disaster cards, then the team gains an extinction tile and the player's turn is again over. These rules can also be combined. For example, I started my turn with this card line, I could not do anything with these cards so I had to take a disaster card and now I have three disaster cards so I take an extinction tile and now my turn is over. 
Coming now to the worst scenario, in the unlucky situation you start your turn with 4 disaster cards in your card line, the team immediately gains 3 extinction tiles and that player's turn is over. If players gain the 7th extinction tile from the supply, then they immediately lose the game. Fortunately, there are ability tokens and abilities on cards that help the player and it's time to explain them. Players start the game with 3 ability tokens. Players can use these tokens at any time during their turn and they can use multiple tokens even on the same turn. Players simply perform the effect of the tile and then flip it facing downwards to indicate that it has been used. With this ability tile, the player draws an additional card from their draw deck and places it in their card line. With the movement ability, the player can move any card from their line except a disaster card which is not exhausted into the card line of any other player. Alternatively, a player can move the selected card back to its corresponding supply. When you return a plant or an animal card, you must place it in the bottom of the corresponding stack. Finally, the refresh tile allows the player to refresh either the animal or the plant cards in the middle of the table. You simply take all of the cards, place them in the bottom of the corresponding stack and then you flip the next top 4 cards. Deactivated ability tiles cannot be used again, however, you can reactivate one of them every time you have two animals that have at least one bioma symbol in common. So in this case, I can reactivate one of my tiles. As we said, animal and plant cards also depict these ability symbols. These are exactly the same abilities but work independently of the tiles. When you have such cards in your line, you can perform these abilities regardless whether the card is exhausted or not. For convenience, you can use markers to indicate that the power has been used for that turn. For cards that depict multiple symbols, the player must select which one ability will be used. Also, after you gain a new card that has an ability symbol, you can use it even on the same turn. However, please note that when performing the movement ability from cards, you cannot move that same card that activated the ability. As I said, the game also has a solo mode. The game plays in solo exactly the same, except on when you use the movement ability. You cannot move cards to any other player, of course, but instead, you can move any one of your cards to the top of your draw deck which ensures that you will redraw this card for your next turn. And that were the rules of Ecosphera and stay tuned as this game will be hitting Kickstarter really soon. If you like my videos and want to see more, please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, have fun and play more board games. <laughs>